Hey guys, and welcome back to the Horror Room. Today I put together a list of people that I think should play Ghostface. It's a pretty good list. I took some time on it. There's a lot of range here. I think you'll like it and find someone that you think on this list that should be the new Ghostface in Scream 5, which a lot of people are coming back for, which makes it really good. Unfortunately, Wes Craven, 2015, passed away from a brain tumor, so hopefully this film is in his image, in his vein, and his vision. So we'll see how it goes. I don't know who the writers are yet. I'm sure they've already been announced since they're already casting for main characters. So I have to look that up. Hopefully, I used to remember uh, who the two writers were mainly on that film, so we'll see. So I'd like it to be the original screenwriters. I know that Wes Craven was close with, there was two of them. And I know the Weinsteins produced it, and I know how much uh, trouble he's had over the last five years. So we'll see the production and who actually puts it up for that. And there's going to be a lot of uh, extraneous values to check out. But that's not what we're here for. We're here for this list. So, number one is Rooney Mara. Girl with a Dragon Tattoo, American version. Obviously, there was books, Swedish books, Swedish movies, and then we got our movie with... Daniel Craig and Runa Mara. Great actress, could definitely play Ghostface. Number two, Robbie Emil. Robbie Emil, he was in a bunch of Netflix movies and is uh, would be a perfect, perfect Ghostface. Jake Gyllenhaal. I mean, come on now. Jake Gyllenhaal is awesome. Thank you, Kitty, for getting in front of my screen there. That is my cat's in front of the screen there. I'm sorry. Hopefully they don't do that again. This is what happens when you have five cats. But we're going to move right along. Jake Gyllenhaal, number three. Thank you very much, Layla. Jake Gyllenhaal will be number three. A great, great actor for this. If you all need to go to YouTube and check out In Those Shoes, it was a short film that Jake Gyllenhaal did for free with these guys that reached out and gals that reached out to him. They actually did it. It's a great short film. They actually, what turned me on to Jake Gyllenhaal, because I never saw him as a, a great actor, just average, not subpar, but average, he did without speaking, which is super hard to do, a video called In Those Shoes on YouTube. Check out that horror short. It's like a music video-esque horror short. Did fantastic. You need to check it out. So at number three, we have Jake Gyllenhaal. Number four, Daniel Harris. Ah, <laughs> How awesome would it be to have Daniel Harris as the killer? Now remember, you can have up to two, three as many killers really as you want to play Ghostface. You know, that was one of the big things in Scream 1, the original Scream, 1996, was having two killers. And it worked beautifully. And I would think now that this tone of this movie should be a lot darker. It should re almost realize, they don't break that fourth wall on Scream, which is great. It is a serious, scary horror movie. But it almost does. It really flirts that line. That's what made it so innovative at the time. I think they should keep a little bit of elements of that. But also should definitely be darker and serious. Um, I don't know how you go about that. But I've got some thoughts actually on that at the end of this video. I may turn your head a little bit there. So Daniel Harris, number five, Shia LaBeouf. Shia LaBeouf is a great actor. Could definitely, and he's crazy. Could definitely see him playing a ghost face for sure. Shia LaBeouf. Definitely have you on the list. Jennifer Love Hewitt. Jennifer Love Hewitt could definitely play Ghostface. She's been she's a screen queen. I know what you did last summer. I still know what you did last summer. All kinds of others. I really, you know, the Ghost Whisperer, this would be right up her alley, and she's a great actress with a lot of range. Didn't she do some spy movies with kids? And she's did a whole host of she's ran the gamut, really. And she could really do a ghost face justice. Next, we have Ryan Philippe. Same thing. Still know what you did last summer, Ryan Philippe. Last thing, uh, The Way of the Gun. The Way of the Gun is a great movie. If you haven't seen The Way of the Gun, you need to check The Way of the Gun out. It is an awesome, older movie. Man, I'm getting old. And also, he, he had a, a mini series or a television series that I actually, I don't, I don't watch much TV. And I don't have the time to get too many things going on, but I actually stopped to watch the first season. It was like a crime drama. Kitties! It's like a crime drama thing, and it was really good. So check out Ron Philippi. See what you think about him being a ghost face. I think it'd be great. 
Sean Patrick Flannery from the Boondock Saints. Another great pick for Ghostface. Now you gotta understand, all these people have to fit the same niche as Ghostface. Trying to be in the, they don't have to be the same age. But in my mind, you'd like to keep them the same age around Sydney as and Ned Campbell that plays that character. You know, which Ned Campbell, Courtney Cox, and David Arquette have all signed for Screen Five, which is awesome. And who else? You know, maybe they can even bring back the cheerleader from the original. She's still alive. That 30-second bathroom scene she had. She's, well, become a star since then. Did a yoga book and other stuff. Which, she may be on this list. Also, next from Ron Filthy, we have Ethan Hawke. Would be, Ethan Hawke would be a great ghost face. Now, keep in mind, like I said, to reiterate, two or three ghost face, not out of the question. Not out of the question for these films. Oh, Lord. Okay, this is actually a girl we were just talking about. I'm going to butcher her name, and I'm so sorry. Leonardo Scaretto. Scaretto Scully. The girl that did the 30-second bathroom scene with her, with her sidekick. She had a book. She was the cheerleader in the first screen. We all know her. And she did a great job. Just from that little snippet, her mannerisms. <laughs> you know, it was great. She was very eccentric, which at times goes face is very eccentric and you need that in the ghost face but you could definitely see in her attitude at least i thought maybe i'm reading too much into it that she had a calmness about her as well so i think she's got those two elements ghost face has to have eccentricism if that's a word I mean, very eccentric and um, be also be charismatic but also calm and composed that what makes that is what make that is what makes a good ghost face and a good psycho killer because they're psycho, but they're smart, and they're calm, and they're methodical. That's hard to do. That's why most serial killers in life end up getting caught anyhow, because they the urges take over, and they just can't control themselves. Ghostface is better than that. He's a class above. He's like a first-class killer. Doesn't let his urges take over. Obviously, he wants Sydney the most in this vein. But our killer is a step above the rest. Step your game up, killer. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, Ethan Hawke, Leonardo Scaradio, the, the, the cheerleader girl, um, Emma Stone. Emma Stone would be another great choice to be a ghost face. He knows all these people have range. They're good character actors and can, can, can do this very good. Very, very good. Naomi Rapace, you would know her from the latest trilogy before the alien movie uh sir ridley scott's making that trilogy he's got one more film to go and she plays a good portion of one of the movie uh, lead actresses uh i forget maybe it's prometheus she's in no they rapace and she's also got a really good netflix movie out where she uh she plays a bodyguard she could definitely definitely pull off a ghost face definitely once again has that split personality that calm coolness but she can flip out whoop some ass be athletic enough ghost face isn't super athletic but you can't be let's face it can't be fat you gotta be semi-athletic you know run run five miles without getting tired not blistering pace you know do a few push-ups you gotta believe that ghost face can get away from a couple heavier people or a couple people that aren't as smart He's a step above in all these classics. He's not Superman. He's not in the Olympics. But he's above average. Like me. <laughs> yeah, okay. So, moving on. Alicia Van Kanda. She's a, oh gosh, Netherlands or Swedish. I'm sorry. Van Kanda. She's dating uh, the guy that played in uh, a bunch of movies. The guy played in that movie. Oh, she was Tomb Raider. Lisa Van, was just start there. Lisa Van Kender was Tomb Raider in the last movie. I think she did a great job. She's definitely got the physical prowess to do this. Definitely has the range, all kinds of emotions in that movie, however you feel about it, love it, or hate it. I think she did a good job. You can't follow, look, you can't follow, I forget her name right now, um, you know, can't follow the original Tomb Raider girl. Good Lord. We all know her. She was the best at that role. She's been acting for you. She was awesome. And for Alicia Van Kamp to pick it up to even try, props to you, girl. Props. I don't know why I'm blanking on her name, but we, you know, she's in Salt. She's in A Thousand Bone Collector. Or love, you know, she's in all kinds of movies. You know, very attractive. The big lips, the black hair. She dated uh, 
the, the funny weird guy they had they had the blood vials around their necks blanking on both their names but obviously she's a good actress and a perfect fit for Tomb Raider and for Alicia and Kendra come behind her and try that props next Catherine Watterson obviously Catherine Watterson actually was in the Alien series. What's me and picking on the Alien series? The prequel Alien movies as well did a great job. She's also in those magic movies. They uh, want to be Harry Potter American version. She was in that. Did a good job in that as well. Also Colin Farrell. Who doesn't love Colin Farrell? He fell out of favor because his little wannabe porno soft porn that happened that he put out or his girlfriend taped and put out, however the case may be. He Fell out of favor a lot of people, which is weird. Usually happens when those things happen, they uh, boost your career, it seems, in Hollywood. Not so much with Gold Colin. Great Irish actor. He did a great job in Total Recall, the remake. Thought he did great in that. Thought he did great in SWAT. I've been a fan of Colin for a long time. I'm Irish as well. Um, he, everything he does, he does really good. He Oh, he played in... Uh, wasn't he in the American movie with Catherine Watterson, the uh, American version of the Harry Potter series, right? Comment down below and let me know. So that's my list of people that I think there's 16, 17, 15 of them there. Let me know if one of these you like and what one it is or if you have another idea for the new Ghost Face or Ghost Faces. So Ghost Scream 5, guys. You know, like my little notes. Usually I have a little computer. Everyone old school made a little half-assed script here. So I actually wrote a, it's not even a treatment, it just made a synopsis of what I think. Because where do you go with Scream 5? Because it's been, you know, Scream 5. We're at number 5, which I've always wanted to see 5, unfortunately. And Wes Craven, rest in peace, man, pushed really hard to get a Scream 5, but never really get the backing. I don't know what his uh, ideas would have been, but it'd been really cool to see if he did a treatment floating out there in the ether. If someone can find that see his thoughts on how it should progress. That'd be really cool. Well, we've got an interesting thing. Neff Campbell's came back every time. And since she's coming back again, this will be her fifth installment. So, here's my thoughts on what you had in this movie. You ready? I'm going to try to read this off. I may screw it up, but I'm sorry because my handwriting is atrocious, even for myself. If Nev, if Nev, if Nev, if Nev Campbell loses it, uh, and, the, and then eventually, uh, okay, so Ned Campbell loses it, and she actually ends up losing her mind, and instead of her being preyed on, she becomes the killer. What if Ned Campbell becomes Ghostface, and starts going after either high schoolers, and you can even, now you can set it in Woodsboro. Instead of having it somewhere else, or having to try and move locations, we can go back to what we know, which is Woods Row, which ties it more to the first film. That's why if we get people like the cheerleader that played 30 seconds that's still alive back to back for screen five, that would help continuity, right? We as fans love that. So bring back the cheerleader. All the others are coming back. So what if Ned Campbell goes crazy? All this trauma, horrific trauma she's been through her whole life finally takes its toll and she finally kind of snaps, but ends up either A, going after cheerleaders or anyone in high school, B, going after the remaining... Remember her cousin? Wasn't in Scream 4? Her cousin actually uh, got jealous, um, and which that really started her. She's now a Scream Queen. Who was in Scream 4? I forget that young girl's name. But in Scream 4, wasn't uh, Nev's cousin that tried to kill her do it, and Courtney and Nev killed her at the end of the hospital? But you can say, okay... I'm tired of my family. What if she loses and goes after her family, her friends, and anyone she thinks that's associated with these other killers still in the proximity of Wards Wardsboro? What if he goes after their extended family or immediate family? So now we've got the reverse of Nev Campbell taking all her rage and becoming Ghostface and going after all the uh, family and extended family of all the other killers in that uh, local vicinity. Let's say it's in 200 miles that came before. That would be awesome. That would actually move Nev's Campbell character, which we love character arcs, a great deal. She went from being, you know, quiet reserved to transforming to being a victim to being a heroine. Uh, now to being a 
from a protagonist back now to an antagonist. Full circle, that hardly ever happens. And who comes to save the day? The remaining original OG cast. Courtney Cox. Nev, uh, not Nev Campbell, she's screaming. Courtney Cox. Um, David Arquette. And whoever else is left, they have to come back. They figure out that Nev Campbell is now Ghostface. And they have to come back and put her out of her misery. You know? Because they can't save her. So it will be a great ending for this series. Nev Campbell has Ghostface, goes after extended family, and maybe throwing some high schoolers there for, you know, maybe some of the extended family are high schoolers going to Woodsboro High. Bam. Full circle. I think it's a great idea. Comment down below and let me know. So, in closing, just to reiterate, Nev Campbell goes after extended family and immediate family of the other killers that have tried to kill her, and maybe some of those people are in the high school in Woodsboro, Woodsboro High School, in Woodsboro, and then Courtney Cox, David Arquette, all the original OG, finally figure this out and have to go and track her down and kill her. And she could even know them intimately, obviously she does, and she has to pretend that she's not the psycho killer, and they have to figure out. And she'll be so good at masking this because she said she's got so much practice being stalked. She said since she's got so much time. And progression this would be a great ending arc for her character comment down below let me know and as always guys stay creepy